In today's Necron painting tutorial, I'm going to show you how to paint Scorpec destroyers quick and easy. And it's coming right up. Necrons! Nick speaking and welcome to this video. Right, today we are painting Scorpec destroyers. As you can see, I've already primed mine black. Now I don't actually have them glued to the bases. The plasma site is glued, but the actual Scorpex aren't, just to make painting a bit easier. Now I have actually converted my Scorpex and you will be able to find a tutorial on how you can convert your Scorpex destroyers in the description below. However, we're here today to paint them and I'm particularly looking forward to painting Mr. Crab. Really loving this conversion and he just reminds me of a crab. So I've named him Mr. Crab and he's going to lead up all of my Scorpex destroyers. I'm actually painting 12 Scorpec destroyers here, and also six Ophidians. The Ophidian tutorial will come in the future. However, Scorpecs today, and this is going to give me three units of six. I can't wait to play 18 Scorpecs. Okay, so the first job is to go over the model with black, so just a watered down black paint, and we're just going to fill in any areas that the primer spray paint didn't actually get to. So usually this is just sort of underneath the neck sometimes, sometimes in some of the joints, just black in the whole of the model. This is quite an important step to take because how we're going to paint the miniature, we do want all of the recesses to be black. Okay, so first of all, we are using Iron Breaker. I've got this in my wet palette, it's not watered down. I'm going to use a dry brush, and I'm going to dry brush this miniature all over. Now, one reason why I wanted black in the recesses is because I'm not going to use a shade. Now, I've had a few comments previously, how can you paint a miniature and not use a shade? Well, seriously, trust me, using this technique, you don't need a shade because the black in the recesses will be there after priming, and that's your shadows. So just go over all of the miniature with this dry brush, just carefully dry brushing everything that you want to be silver. Now there are some sections on the weapons which I will leave black just because I'm going to paint those sections black. So yeah, anything you're going to paint silver, just dry brush it right now. And that's all done, and guess what? We're going to do some more dry brushing, this time with lead boucher. But I'm not going to put this all over the miniature, I'm just going to put this over the legs. And the reason for that is just my paint scheme. I paint all of my vehicles with this lead boucher as a second layer, but my warriors, my infantry, gets painted with rune fang still as a second layer. So I'm going to paint the legs with lead boucher. And once we've done this, I'm going to paint the bodies with rune fang still. However, let's go over this model here with the lead boucher. Just dry brush it over the top. Again, not too heavy. We're looking for a mottled, worn metal look and you could paint all of your miniature in this color. However, as I said, I don't. So with all the legs painted with lead voucher, it's now time to bring out the rune fang still. And again, I'm just going to gently dry brush over the top half of the miniature with rune fang still. Now to be fair, the difference between the two isn't that big, it's quite marginal, but I know there's a difference and that's what counts. So as long as I'm happy with what I'm doing, then it's all good. So just dry brush the top half of the miniature with this color, but again, I'm leaving some of the weapon areas black, not the blades, just the little bar that's running at the top of the blade, just to add a little contrast to the silver. Okay, so that's done. However, we haven't finished painting the silver. I'm going to go back in with a lead belcher, and again, this might seem quite unusual, but it really does actually work, it makes a difference. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do an overbrush with this on top of the rune fang still areas, so the top half of the miniatures. And I'm going to overbrush just the big panels of these miniatures. So this will be like the forearms, I will do the head, I will do the sides of the rib cage. And what it does, it takes away that old look over the whole of the miniature. It gives you some sort of full metal areas but also it maintains that old look on the other areas. So like I said, just pick out some of the bigger areas. An overbrush means you don't take the paint off as much as you do for a dry brush, so leave a little bit more paint on when you're painting it. 
and that is the silver done. Next up, we're going to do the green. And we're going to use warp stone green. And I'm going to paint all of the orbs with this color. So that's the orbs on the legs and also on the arms. I have watered down the green paint, so a little bit of water so that I can do two thin coats of this color. And of course, I am painting the plasma site at the same time. So the orbs on the plasma site, on the plasma site's towel, in the body, just paints this, a couple of layers, build up the green, and then we're ready for the next stage. And the next stage, of course, is mute green. So we're going to do a second layer with this color all over the green that we've already painted. However, we're going to leave some of the warp stone green exposed on the outer edges of the orbs. I'm also going to paint this color on the eyes. So I'm just gonna dot all of the eyes with this color. When I dot the eyes, I just move to a much smaller paintbrush, a triple zero, and also make sure that I position the model, turning it upside down in many cases, so that it's easier to get the brush into the eye socket. And that's the green done, and as you can see, it's popping quite nicely. I've also painted the green Necron symbol on the chest plate in this color as well. So next up, we are going to use Gehanna's Gold. And you're going to want to really shake this pot of paint and get a stick and really mix it because it's quite a red gold. And if you don't mix it, it will just come out, well, really red. So give it a full mix, and then we can start painting the next stage, which is going to be the collars of the Scorpec Destroyers. I'm going to paint the gold color on the collars. This will just add an extra color, just a little depth, just help finish the model off nicely. I do have a little bit of water in the paint, and I will be painting two thin coats. Okay, so next we are going to go back in with black and I'm going to black in the weapon areas that I said I wanted black because of course the dry brush is a little messy. So I'm just gonna tidy up the black sections. Effectively, it's just the pole running alongside the top of the weapon. I want that black just to add a bit of contrast to the weapons. Now, as you can see, I've got quite a lot of black paint on my wet palette. And the reason for that, of course, is I'm painting 18 miniatures here in one go. Uh, off camera, so that's why I've got so much paint. But obviously if you're just painting three or six, you won't need as much black paint as I've got there. Okay, now just to finish the black off, I'm going to dry brush over the top of it very gently with lead voucher. Now as I said, it's very, very gentle because if you dry brush too much, it will just turn it from black to metal. And we don't want that, so we want to keep the black effect, but just do a little highlight. So very gentle dry brush, over the black. Okay, so now I'm going to work on the bases a little before I do the weapons. So I've got my Caliban green on my wet palette. I'm going to paint all of the rocks, all of the crystals, and all of the areas that I want to be green. So it could be on the plasma site, for example, there's some little buildings. I'm going to paint some of those green as well. So it's just a watered down paint. I'm going to do two coats all over the areas that I want with this green. Okay, so now we're going to highlight the green. Very simple, we're going to use warp stone green first. I'm going to dry brush over all of the areas that I've just painted with Caliban green. And then once that's done, I'm going to gently dry brush over the areas again, and this time with mute green, just to give me some highlights on the rocks and the crystals. Now the final highlight on the crystals I will just do on the top area of the crystal, so I won't go right the way down to the base. That just gives a little point of difference to the crystals. Now for reference, the metal areas of the base, I actually did put a wash on. I used Agrat's Earthshade, and then I just dry brushed over that with Iron Breaker to give them some highlights. It also gives a point of difference between the actual miniature and the base itself. Okay, so let's talk about the weapons. Now, of course, the traditional way to paint these weapons is to have them green and to do lots of blending and just trying to get some cool highlights, and that looks really good. However, it's not how I painted my weapons for my Scorpec Destroyers. I wanted something that was simple but cool, something that looked different from the rest of my army's weapons because these Reap Blades, they're new weapons. I wanted them to be different. So what I did is I got the white paint and I painted into the grooves 
of the weapon. So as you can see, there's like a little pattern on the weapons and I just gently painted them in. I used a triple zero brush. I used some slightly watered down white skull paint and I just painted in those recesses. Now, if you get a little messy with this, you can just brush over the paint with your finger and just take it off of the weapon and that leaves it in the recesses. Just be as careful as you can. Now this does take a little time to do, but it's worth it in the end. We're going to end up with a cool effect. Now I also painted the faces of my plasmacytes uh, with white because all of my canoptic creatures, well apart from scarabs because they're so small, they have white faces. Now I did this by just painting many layers of thin coats of white, just built up the white. Right, now for the cool section, we're going to use the technical paint Tesseract Glow. Now this came out with the new Necron releases and I wanted to try it. So this is how I came up with this paint scheme for my weapons. So all I did is got this paint and I painted it over the white that I put into the grooves of the weapons. And that's it, it gives me a very, very cool effect. You could potentially paint over the whole of the blade but I didn't like that effect when I experimented, so I just went into the recesses. And there they are, all finished. Of course, I finished the bases as well, so I just glued some sand on the bases. When that dried, I just painted it black, and then I just dry brushed it with Dawnstone Grey. And then I just added some different rocks and crystals to identify the three units. So I have one unit with crystals on the base, one unit with rocks on the base, and one unit with these bright green rocks on. So I can easily see which models go with which units. Really, really happy with how they look. As I said, it's a pretty simple scheme, but they look pretty cool. They match the rest of my army. They're nice and easy to paint. I hope you enjoyed this painting tutorial. Here is the video where I convert the Scorpec destroyers, and here are some other painting tutorials which I previously made. Uh -huh.